Welcome to the Kidney Week 2020 Reimagined Podcasts, where ASN President Anupam Agarwal will be hosting discussions about various topics in nephrology. ASN thanks Akibia Therapeutics for support of this podcast. Welcome uh, to this Kidney Week podcast on day one. Uh, this The topic is on technology and innovation in the kidney space. I am uh, Anupa Agarwal, president of the American Society of Nephrology, and I have uh, two guests with me today, and I will have them introduce themselves. Hello, uh, my name is Anna Greca. I am uh, an associate professor at Harvard Medical School, a physician at Brigham and Women's Hospital, and an institute member at the Broad Institute in Boston. And I'm really delighted to be here today. Thank you for having me. Hi, my name is Timmy Lee. I'm a professor at the University of Alabama at Birmingham and also the section chief of nephrology at the Birmingham VA. I'm a clinical nephrologist with with interest in, in dialysis-related research. Well, thank you uh, both, Anna and Timmy. Really delighted to have you. Um, so as I mentioned, the topic is technology and innovation in the kidney space. So I'll begin by, uh, you know, a, a question to each one of you. Uh, tell me a little bit about uh, your focus area of research uh, and what are you hoping to achieve uh, with this work? Uh, and also, how do you think that it improves uh, on what is currently uh, present uh, in, in the space? So, Anna, you can go first. Uh, sure. Yeah, it's uh, definitely a very interesting topic and I think, uh, you know, worth um, covering and discussing today. Um, my work, uh, of course, uh, strives to uh, be innovative uh, in an area where I think uh, there is uh, a great need in our field. Um, and that's uh, essentially also the subject of my uh, lecture on Saturday morning, uh, the idea of bridging uh, fundamental discoveries in genetics and genomics uh, to a deeper understanding of the mechanisms um, that um, these uh, disrupted um, genetics mediate in uh, different cell types in the kidney and how we can ultimately harness uh, that um, understanding, the mechanistic understanding, uh, to develop uh, targeted therapies. Um, I think that this is uh, an innovation long in coming for our field. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, we, in my group, we uh, very much think about um, all the different uh, technologies that we can bring to bear to, uh, you know, make this a reality. Um, the truth is that it's, you know, definitely challenging, as it is for other fields as well. But uh, training um, more um, young scientists in our field to tackle these big problems is how we uh, might be able to make progress. And it was so wonderful to see the AAKP um, kind of calling uh, this next decade, the decade of the kidney. Um, I think it's a wonderful concept. Uh, it's great that our patients are pushing us in that direction, um, seeing our patients as partners in this quest for innovation and new technologies, uh, I think is a, is a wonderful concept and um, hopefully will inspire more um, young folks to, to join in this fight. Yeah, thank you, Anna. And also, again, congratulations on the ASN, uh, AHA, uh, uh, Donald Selden Young Investigator Award. We look forward to your presentation on Saturday. Uh, that's a huge honor and recognition of your longstanding work and innovation in, in the kidney space. So congratulations again. So Timmy, can you tell us uh, about your focus area of research and what you're hoping to achieve with your work and how do you think it improves on what currently exists? Yes, I'd be delighted to. At first, I'd also like to congratulate Anna for uh, for this year being this year's ASN Young Investigator Award. I've have great respect and admir admiration for her for her her research and and her science. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank um, you both. <laughs> um, so my my research actually, while I am a kidney doctor, my research actually focuses, you know, in an area when the kidneys fail and on blood vessels. So my area focuses on dialysis vascular access research, and majority of patients who reach end stage kidney disease um, utilize hemodialysis as their primary form of kidney replacement therapy. So. All these patients will require a functional and durable vascular access. And one of the main problems for our patients in the United States is that about 50 to 60% of these fistulas that, that fail 
that that are created fail to successfully mature for dialysis due to two main reasons, the inability for the blood vessel to dilate and an aggressive and early formation of intimal hyperplasia that leads to stenosis. So my research over the last 10 to 12 years has been, been focusing on the mechanisms that lead to this stenosis and, and ABF maturation failure. So one aspect is studying the mechanisms, but I think a very interesting and important component of my research is the multidisciplinary collaboration. So I've been very fortunate to work with biomedical engineers who develop um, novel platforms to deliver drugs, genes, and, and different types of cells. And one um, project that we have is looking at the role of nanomatrix releasing therapies of nitric oxide. So we have both, we have grants that are looking at um, um, a gel um, a gel delivery system which delivers nitric oxide perivascularly, meaning that it's directly over where the blood, where the artery in the vein meets when you create a fistula and delivered, you know, at the time of surgery. And this therapy um, can deliver nitric oxide over a period of, of 30 days where the remodeling period is critically important. So we've been able to work with biomedical engineering and, and other, you know, collaborators um, outside of nephrology to help develop, develop these novel therapies. I think one innovative mechanism that nephrology hasn't utilized quite as often is, is, is these commercialization grants offered by the NIH, so these SBIRs and STIRs, and these um, grants help, you know, early formation of, of small companies by 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 investigators to help um, develop these technologies. So we've been fortunate enough to to have a phase one and now phase two um, SBIR, and hopefully this has really helped us collect some some important complementary data from small animals to now pig models, and hopefully we're taking it first to man. So I'd like to emphasize, you know, the, you know, the opportunities for nephrology to, to really expand, you know, I think it is very dependent on how well we collaborate with people outside our field. And I, I, I'm very, actually very hopeful because if you, there will be a session I like to highlight tomorrow. Um, it's a translational session, but a very bioengineering session, which really, kind of highlights the engineering component uh, of nephrology. So um, one talk will be by Shu Roy looking at artificial implanted kidneys um, and development of that. One talk will be by David Cooper looking at um, xenotransplantation of, of, kidney, of pig kidneys. And then and one, one other talk will be looking by Joris Rotman discussing bioengineered blood, blood vessels for dialysis vascular access. So while nephrology is behind, I think there are some promising innovations coming in the field. Great, Timmy. Thank you uh, for that response. Uh, let me follow up with you, Timmy, on, you know, um, do you really think that we are lagging behind in terms of other specialties, in terms of technology and innovation? If so, why do you think... Uh, uh, that this perception seems to exist. Right. I mean, in in the field that I work in, you know, specifically focusing on blood vessels, you know, one of the, you know, fields we look at is cardiology, right? So they work with blood vessels and you see how many um, publications are in such high impact journals on a monthly basis and you see how much new technology there are in, in, in devices and, and, and novel delivery therapies. So, you know, I use cardiology as a field, you know, to compare to our research area and, and, and kind of correlate of why we're behind. Um, I think the reason we're behind is, and, and I think we're in trying to improve this, educating, you know, the, the, the public about what kidney disease is. I think that's really, really important. I mean, I think everyone understands what a heart attack is, what heart disease is, what cancer is, but kidney disease is, is, is not quite, quite as well understood. And I, I think it does not get, you know, the education and support, you know, as compared to some of these other, you know, areas that we compete against, such as cardiology and, and hematology and oncology. Anna, what are your thoughts um, to, in terms of responding to that question? I mean, I think that there's uh, two ways to see this, uh, the glass half empty or the glass half full. And um, people who know me always know that I say, you know, it's always better to look at the glass half full. So I will say, you know, certainly there's room for improvement. Um, I think we may have been coming from behind in the last uh, few years, but I think we're rapidly catching up. And I'm very, very heartened and encouraged by, for example, this um, outstanding meeting and all the different talks, uh, both on the kind of fundamental science level, um, but also uh, clinical advances. And I think 
you know, it's fair to say this year we have seen, you know, tremendous uh, progress uh, the last couple of years with, uh, for example, SGLT2 inhibitors and GLP-1 R agonists uh, in the clinic. Uh, wonderful talks earlier today, and there's more coming, including several um, uh, really outstanding e-posters uh, in this area as well. So there's been a tremendous um, interest, I think, in uh, utilizing these new approaches. Um, and so kind of in the space of therapeutics, uh, we may have been uh, lamenting in decades past that we were um, not making a lot of progress with new agents, but I think now finally we have some new things that we can uh, use to help our patients. And I think that's really uh, tremendous. And there's been uh, so many um, uh, scientists and, and physicians in our field, uh, clinical investigators who have uh, participated in this, uh, too many to enumerate, but um, just a tremendous amount of progress and excitement, I think, this year uh, around these new uh, modalities. Now, it's also fair to say that, um, of course, these are, again, uh, treatments that we, to some extent, adapt and borrow from other fields, you know, uh, people working on diabetes, uh, people working on cardiovascular diseases. Um, and so, in terms of taking knowledge of specific mechanisms in the kidney and translating these into new therapies, I think we are just beginning to scratch the surface of that. And yet there is a lot of that happening as well, uh, both in glomerular diseases as well as in tubular diseases. We're beginning to see a lot of progress um, developing targeted therapies for genetically defined kidney disease. Uh, there are several uh, talks uh, coming up in the next few days um, in that um, area, and I think uh, that just speaks to the progress that we have been making um, in that um, realm. And I think from the perspective of innovation, uh, the fact that there's movement in that area is also evident um, in the fact that there has been so much more interest and investment in the biotech space for uh, projects and companies that um, tackle kidney disease. And again, I'm very heartened to see that. Um, I think there's much more that can be done, but Hopefully, this is just the beginning, and uh, you know we can build from there. So, um, glass half full. I think that we are making progress, uh, both in the clinic as well as in translating fundamental discoveries um, in our effort to bring them to the clinic. And so, um, I see the future as being very bright for nephrology. Thank you, um, Anna. So, Timmy, you mentioned some of the biomedical engineering uh, related uh, presentation by Shuvaro and others tomorrow. Um, can you elaborate? Any other sessions uh, that you're uh, hoping to see uh, during Kidney Week that will inform your research or touch upon important topics in terms of innovation? There is also, you know, you, you know, in reference to kind of my particular area, there's some, there is a field, there is a um, um, session on, on, on dialysis vascular access on, on Saturday, which is talking a lot about the fundamental type of biology and discoveries that we have um, in terms of, of different mechanisms and how we are translating that to, you know, to, to, to novel therapeutics. And also the, there are some, some recent advances from, you know, from some multi-center studies looking at um, data from clinical patients to see how we can take things both from the, from the bench from the bench to the bedside as well as from the bedside back to the bench. Anna, you mentioned some of the sessions that you're looking forward to, uh, to seeing in the next few days. Uh, are there any in particular that you would highlight uh, that are particularly innovative that you would bring uh, to your research and build upon that? For sure. I think that there's been um, so much um, excitement this year. And also, uh, while, of course, we have uh, gone virtual and this is a new format for the um, Kidney Week uh, meeting, I think there are great benefits to that too, uh, which is that we can um, actually catch more lectures uh, in cases where they overlap. And so I think uh, that's been really wonderful to see. Um, and I would highlight that um, actually uh, some of the um, uh, early uh, sessions, uh, uh, for uh, example, the advanced research conference uh, that was put together uh, specifically in single cell biology by my uh, colleagues and friends, uh, Catalin Sustak and Ben Humphreys was really tremendous and I encourage folks to check it out. Um, there were uh, a lot of cutting edge lectures uh, by several investigators, some uh, really good keynote lectures as well. And that's really at the bleeding edge of, of technology and innovation, I would say, uh, focusing on single cell biology and using uh, the dr tremendous uh, power and resolution uh, conferred by single cell genomics and other single cell approaches 
uh, to gain a deeper understanding into the complexities of the kidney, the human kidney, finally, um, as well. Um, and I think that uh, that really uh, speaks uh, very highly of our um, field adapting to, uh, you know, this new world of single cell biology. And we have several uh, investigators working in that space. I would highlight uh, outstanding talks by uh, also my friend and colleague, uh, Nana Clatworthy. Uh, I mentioned Catalin and Ben, uh, Melissa Little, uh, so many others who gave just excellent talks. Um, also younger investigators coming up the ranks. I think it's really uh, wonderful to see so much excitement. Um, and then, you know, again, um, in the next few days, we have um, endowed lectureship, very interesting talks. Um, my colleague and friend, Mario Schiefer, gave the Michelle Wynn lecture uh, today, which was uh, amazing. And uh, also, you know, Michelle being a, a dear friend who I miss so much, um, it's just wonderful to sort of see the field move forward, building on her legacy. Um, and there's uh, so much more to see in the next few days. And so I, I'm really very excited about this year's meeting. Uh, I think that, as I mentioned, the virtual forum, um, of course, keeps us, you know, far apart from each other in a spatial sense, but actually closer together in the sense that we can, you know, catch more of each other's lectures and uh, really be able to uh, learn more, I think, uh, with this format. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's really exciting. Thank you, Anna. So let me just, uh, let's uh, uh, close by maybe addressing some of the challenges that exist when it comes to trying to invent and innovate in our field. You know, Anna, you've taken several things from the lab um, bench, you know, to the clinic, you know, through companies and so on that you are part of, which is, you know, tremendous, like a dream for a scientist. And Timmy, you've done that as well in terms of your SBIR grant, you know, with a company and you're taking it now to another level into large animal models and hopefully into humans. So that's really tremendous. And there are, you know, a few examples of those uh, uh, and you both are just role models uh, in terms of taking things uh, forward along those lines. So what, 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 what are the challenges you think that continue to be barriers uh, in terms of moving uh, and innovating in our field of nephrology today? You know, I'd like to also share Anna's you know, optimism as well. I, I think there are a lot of opportunities in, in our field to, to innovate from, from different levels. You know, I, I just, you know, my work happens to, to work, you know, more on the translational and device levels. But I, I would I would say while there are many, many barriers, one of the things that, that I would really like to, you know, not because this is an ASN podcast, but really promote is the Kidney Health Initiative. You know, I've, I've I've worked with the KHI through you know different you know avenues now, as the you know as the chair of the ASDIN um, research committee, you know to help you know work. They they have collaborations with you know different organizations such as the FDA, which which helps you guide um, how you want to submit you know, an application, you know, for 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 clinical studies. So, so I I think while the I mean I think. I think there were many barriers, you know, previously in terms of how do you, you know, the formal process of, of taking, you know, a an idea, you know, doing the preclinical studies and then trying to take it to first demand. I think, you know, our institutions are definitely doing a better job of helping us, you know, you know, take this technology, you know, into more in more clinical trials. But, you know, I think we have resources within our own kidney space, such as the Kidney Health Initiative and, and the people you know, that they collaborate and work with there that really, truly, you know, help us move this forward in a much more efficient and easier way. Hannah, your thoughts? Uh, absolutely. Um, I wanted to, um, I think, um, make four uh, points as to where I think uh, uh, our best efforts should be placed in order to uh, continue our pace toward uh, more and more innovation. I would say the first area, um, and I ought to congratulate you, Anupam, because I think this is an amazing initiative that you have started. Uh, this loan mitigation uh, coupled to diversity and inclusion for our field is just a kind of amazing, terrific idea. Um, and I think that it will help uh, with one of the um, areas uh, that is absolutely needed in order for us to ensure uh, continued innovation. And that's, of course, our workforce. Uh, we need as many bright minds uh, coming to uh, uh, bring their ideas um, and uh, problem solving skills to the many um, kidney diseases that we're all trying to solve. Um, I think it's uh, really tremendous uh, that you have initiated this uh, this program. I would say that 
partnering with patients uh, is very important. And again, I was very happy to see the AKKP be part of this kind of declaring um, the next 10 years as the decade of the kidney. Uh, I've had the honor and privilege to work with the Nefger Foundation, the Rare Kidney Disease Foundation, and the AKKP over the years. And I think really seeing the patients um, as our partners is going to help us implement and fill our clinical trials. Um, and uh, really make more progress uh, at a faster pace. And so partnering with patients, I see as the second important point. Um, in the uh, realm of the clinic, I see um, all this excitement around these new um, agents that we now have um, as a tremendous uh, progress. I think we also need to make sure we implement them with our patients. And so uh, implementation, um, I think, of these uh, uh, clinical advances will be important uh, so that our patients can benefit and so that we can demonstrate as a field that we are early adopters of um, you know, innovative um, ideas and, uh, and new treatments. And then finally, in the space of uh, fundamental science, of course, we just need to continue our deep mechanistic work. Um, I would highlight as perhaps the most elegant example of that will be uh, tomorrow morning, um, Peter Ratcliffe will be giving his lecture um, for the Homer Smith Award, which is, of course, extremely richly deserved. Um, as everyone knows, he's also the recipient of the Lasker Award and the Nobel Prize last year. And so, you know, that kind of fundamental science that uh, is done uh, quietly over many years until finally it can uh, be brought to bear for the benefit of patients is really, uh, to me, the most inspiring example of what we need to be doing again and again until, um, you know, we have treatments for all of our patients. And so, um, I think, you know, working on the workforce issue, um, partnering with patients, adopting all these new clinical tools we have, and, you know, making deep investments into fundamental science. These are the four areas that will ensure our path to innovative um, therapies uh, for long, many years to come. Yeah, Anna, thank you. Those were really great points um, uh, that, you know, I think we need to reiterate uh, to our nephrology community uh, also, the importance of patients that you know cannot be uh, stressed enough. I think they really ultimately whatever we do is towards improving the lives of our patients, whether it's research, education, or clinical care. So having that front center, I think, will take us a long way. Uh, but both Timmy and and Anna, thank you so much for taking your time uh, during this busy next few days uh, with us uh, with this podcast. Uh, really appreciate it. Have a good rest of the week. And, and again, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. It was a great thank pleasure. You. Pleasure's mine. ASN thanks Akibia Therapeutics for support of this podcast. The content of this podcast is for informational purposes only and does not constitute medical advice in any way. Thank you for listening to the Kidney Week 2020 Reimagined Podcasts.